Hey kids, it's Miss Diaz at Quincy Elementary. Remember to pause the video and work at your own pace. But most importantly, enjoy your creation. For this project, you will need a paintbrush, watercolors red, blue, and yellow, a pencil, a black crayon, and a Sharpie, or make sure it's a permanent marker so it won't bleed later. Something round to trace, and perhaps two pieces of paper. I'm going to place my round object on the center of my paper to make a circle. And now I'm using a ruler. You don't have to, but I recommend it. And you're going to draw a line in the center of your paper. Now I'm drawing a Y in the middle of my paper. I'm using that center point to help me. Now I'm drawing an upside, upside down Y. Okay, and now I'm going to draw an X from here to there. Okay, so now you should have 12 pieces. You should have 12 pieces of pie. Okay, I'm going to continue my line outside of my circle shape and that way it'll give the look of a whip. So here's my perfect geometric circle and just above that I'm going to draw a curved line. These curved lines will help give the look of a spider web. Now under my perfect geometric circle, I'm going to continue with curved lines all around the center point. And I have room for one more so I'm going to continue this pattern. Now it's time to use a permanent marker. Make sure this marker is permanent um, because when you use the watercolor, you don't want your black marker to bleed. If you use a washable, washable marker, um, it'll just start inking everywhere and you'll just have a big black mess. So make sure that your marker is permanent forever. And I'm just outlining my pencil line. Now you will need an eraser. You're going to erase your helping line. Your helping line was that perfect geometric circle. We don't need that anymore. And then you might notice that you have extra pencil lines after you outline your whole web. So go ahead and erase your pencil lines. Hold down your paper with your other hand so that your paper doesn't move around and get all wrinkly. Try to keep your paper as smooth as possible. And when you're drawing with a pencil, it's a good idea to use a light hand. Now I am going to write the words red and I'll skip three spaces. And next I'm going to write blue. I'm going to skip three spaces and then yellow. Red, yellow is our first group of colors called the primary colors. And we use the primary colors to make all the colors. Um, red, yellow, and blue, we are unable to recreate 
these colors. They come from nature. So I'm just outlining these words now with my permanent marker. Now, between these words, I'm going to sandwich the word orange. Between red and blue, I'm going to write the word violet. And now I'm going to write green. These group of colors are called secondary colors. These are made by mixing the primi primary colors that sandwich them on the color wheel. Now you'll need to get your watercolors. Remember, all we're using is red, blue, and yellow, the primary colors. You'll also need some water, and perhaps you want a painter's rag or a paper towel. I'm going to start with the first primary color, red. You can put it on your palette if you need to, and just color this whole area red. I'm going to clean my brush. Always clean your brush before you use a new color. The second primary color is blue. So I'll put some blue on my palette maybe. And then apply that blue color onto my image. Always be sure to clean your brush before you dip it into a new color. The third primary color I will use is yellow. Okay, we're going to move on to our secondary colors. This is our second group of colors called secondary colors. The secondary colors are orange, green, and violet. And we get those colors by mixing the primary colors that sandwich them. So here, how do we get violet? Violet is sandwiched between red and blue. So I'm going to get a little blue and add red to it, and now I have a violet or you may call it purple, a violet color. Okay, I'm going to move on to my second secondary color. I'm going to make green. Green is sandwiched between blue and yellow. So I'm going to grab a little blue and grab a little yellow. Ah, look at that, voila, it's green. Okay, now for my third secondary color, I'm going to make orange. Orange is sandwiched between red and yellow. To get orange, I have to mix the primary colors, or I mean red and yellow together. Look at that, now I have a secondary color called orange. By mixing two primary colors, I get orange. Our last step, we're going to move on to our third group of colors called the tertiary colors. Tertiary. That's a hard word for me to say, so that's why it took me so long to say it. We're making the tertiary colors. These are made by mixing the primary color and the secondary color that sandwich them on the color wheel. So here, to get this yellow green color I'm going to make green once more but then I'm going to add more yellow to get a lighter green okay here I'm going to make another tertiary color I'm going to make orange once more 
We make orange by mixing red and yellow together. But this time, I'm going to add more yellow. So I have orange plus yellow. And now I have a light orange color. Okay, here I'm going to mix orange and red together. So get to get a tertiary color, you mix a primary color with a secondary color. So here my primary color is red, my secondary color is orange. I mix those two together to get a red-orange color. And you can see the difference. Now I'm going to mix the primary color red and I'm going to mix the secondary color violet to get this darker red color. So here is violet plus red. My next tertiary color I'm going to mix the secondary color violet, but I'm going to add blue, a primary color, to it. And now you can see this dark, darker blue. So I have a blue violet. Okay, I'm going to mix the secondary color green. So I have to make green again. I'm getting some blue, yellow. Now I have the secondary color green, but I'm going to add the primary blue to it. And now I get my tertiary color blue-green. For this final step, to color outside of the will or to color outside of the web, I want you to mix blue, red, and yellow together and see what color you get. You can mix your watercolors on your palette. Or what you can do is wet your paper down slightly and you can mix the colors on your paper. So experiment with that. Um, mix some of your colors on your palette or try wetting your paper down slightly and mixing those colors on the paper and see what kind of different effects you get. So you can see I'm getting a brown color. Um, brown is a composite color, and you get that by mixing red, yellow, and blue together. So maybe you're at school and you don't have a brown, and now you know how to get brown by mixing these three primary colors together. To make a spider for your web, you just need a second piece of paper. For the head, I draw a smallish circle, and for the body, a larger circle than the head. And then I want you to decide how you're going to draw the features, the face of your spider. So it doesn't need to look like mine. In this project, I want you to make sure that you color 
carefully. Use good craftsmanship. See how I'm making a block of color, a block of color, a block of color on top of each other. Scribbling like this is not um, the best way to color. See how that's block, 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 block. And that way this whole area of the shape is colorful. It's full of color. A spider has four legs. A spider is not an insect. Insects have three legs on both sides. A total of six, that's their feature. So make sure you have four legs. A cutting tip is to cut around your object and get rid of this excess paper so that way it makes it easier to cut. And now you just want to cut carefully around your spider picture. Now you'll need some type of string, maybe ribbon, yarn, whatever you can find. If you have a hole puncher, great, use a hole puncher. If not, you can poke a hole with a pencil. Um, this hole puncher isn't going to reach that center, so I'm going to poke a hole carefully with my pencil. You can see the other side, the pencil's going on the other side. And then you'll be able to string your yarn, ribbon, whatever you can find at home through that hole. Um, if you have tape, great. Tape your spider to the yarn ribbon. If not, just tie a knot. And now you can move your spider up and down the web. 